In early January of 2012, I saw a post on the lens site Nikon Gear by Akira Sakamoto, a wonderful photographer. It was a picture of a chrysanthemum taken with a CRT Nikkor 55mm f1.2. It was not a stacked photo, but it was a close-up and I like the combination of sharpness and softness it presented. It started me to think differently about photo stacking, and it marks the beginning of a breakthrough for me in the work that I've been doing. Perhaps I've been looking at the wrong end of the lens aperture all this time, because for years I've tried to push aperture to the high numbers, you know, the narrow openings, because that way I could get more depth of field. I could see more detail. And I did this, at least in the beginning, with stacking, focus stacking as well. Everyone knows that large, wide open apertures give us a very thin depth of field. And I never wanted that. What I wanted was more depth of field. And I had steadfastly avoided even looking at a whole range of powerful Nikon lenses that were made for extreme close-up work, often called the industrial Nikors. And many of them were very, very sharp, even wide open, and some were fast, too. What possible value could they be for my work? But then I began to see how they could be used. What if I use these exotic sharp lenses wide open, or, or nearly so, and then stack that very narrow depth of field to amass as much of the subject as I wanted in focus, and just let the rest of the photo go to bokeh, just to blur? I experimented with what few lenses I had that were good for close-up work and that were also both fast and sharp. I liked what I saw. So I had to get a copy of the same lens that Akira used, one of the exotic industrial Nikors, the CRT Nikkor 55mm, which is a f1.2 lens, a very fast lens. It was a lens that was originally used to photograph CRT monitors, so it had a certain special curvature to it. And it, it's a special lens. Anyway, the lens is expensive. These industrials, these exotic Nikkors are expensive lenses. And then I begin to stack. And sure enough, stacking selective areas in the subject using the narrow depth of field that a fast, wide open lens offers, and I combine that with the broad sense of blur or bokeh that they also produce, made for some really interesting photos. After all these years, I, I had found a technique that actually satisfied me. I felt like one of those gold miners who pan for gold for many years, but never get a strike, and then they hit pay dirt. I had at last found something that I actually liked. As it turns out, I don't see anyone else using this particular technique, at least to any extent. I began to look for other exotic Nikors. And they're, they're exotic for a couple of reasons. Most of them were not made with an F mount, the standard Nike, you know, the lens mount, but rather they were made for special industrial equipment so that they have off size threads or even no threads at all. Some of them are designed for a single magnification range only, like one to one and nothing else. Anything outside of that range is not very usable. And forget about going to infinity, these lenses just don't do that. Many lack some of the sophisticated coatings that we find in the newer lenses and so on. In fact, one expert claims that these industrial lenses are rare because they are mostly used as museum pieces. Don't know about that, but not in my book, I'm gonna use them. These exotic lenses are fast and very, very sharp. 
and they are also expensive and rare. I don't see many folks using them to make photos with that I've come across. Of course, great lensmen like Bjorn Roslet knows about these lenses and has written about, about them, or at least most of them. Another huge resource for me has been Klaus D. Schmidt, who has collected and archived the exotic macro lenses for many years. Schmidt has helped me find these exotic Nikons, shown me how to use them, and even built special mounts and helicoids for my work. And Schmidt knows these lenses. So what is it that I think I'm doing? That's a good question, and I, I ask myself that every day. I'm using these very fast lenses that are sharp, wide open to stack focus. Although, although these lenses have a razor thin depth of field, I'm stacking that very thin depth of field layer on layer to create a very sharp image of whatever size I want and allowing the rest of the photo to be, I guess, just out of focus, you know, bokeh. I find the contrast of the very sharp stacked portions against the more dreamy bokeh of the background has scratched some itch I have always had inside of me. Call it the realist meets the impressionist, or better yet, meets the surrealist. The sharply focused areas of the photo are featured against the broad pastel-like dreaminess of the background, and to me, I guess the subtext message the photo sends is something like, and these are just my words, this crystal clear reality that we live in and believe exists is but an island of awareness suspended in a larger dream, dream we're having, a dream painted in broad strokes and colors which has no past and no future, a product of our own mind stream. I know this is somewhat abstract, but that's the kind of impressionism, surrealism, I'm trying, perhaps not yet successfully, uh, to project.